Gabby Dagnese, how are you doing? Hi, I'm good. I'm back good. after a little vacay for like a awesome. couple months. We missed <laughs> you. Eric, we missed her, huh? I missed you. <laughs> Eric's telling me he's been with me this whole time. Aww. He's just, he actually is so great with um, me and a lot of blog members and you, Mama, he says, with like helping people just really honor their energy when they need to take like a minute to just kind of like of refocus Put on your and own like oxygen yeah mattress, man eric was really really helping me just like with regrounding i'm busy i'm a mom soccer coach board member of the soccer team oh. i work full-time as an x-ray tech at a hospital covid's yeah. back in new england so you oh, know whoa got bad again for a bit so oh, God. it's just been an interesting couple of months oh. <laughs> well we are going to make it worth people's while because we're going to talk to jane Rowe, who is the Rowe in the ray v row uh controversy um so eric can you bring jane in she she's here she's here she's actually sitting very comfortably and very eloquently actually, on this very comfortable couch that's not she's even, just oh sorry there's not even her real name I'll, I'll look it up while while we talk but, i was just about to tell you um that that's not her real name yeah i i i i, I don't know anything about her but um does it start with an n yes norma lee nelson okay, okay. She was thinking Norma. about, she was making me think of my Nana and my Nana's name is Norma. Oh my so God. that's why she was making me think of my Nana because she was trying wow. to give me the clue that that's her name. This is how good you are, wow. man. All right, Norma, <laughs> can I call you Norma? She says, yes, you may, ma'am. Okay, so she's got a Southern accent, um, very similar to yours. Okay. So um, obviously she's not from Boston. <laughs> okay, probably not. All right, uh, Norma, is it true that you really did not want to have an abortion or did you want an abortion? I mean, tell us about the steps leading up to that whole thing. Sorry, you're just trying to get my, get my flow. Get the flow. <laughs> okay. Um, so she believes in women's rights in general. And she says, I have always been an advocate and always will be an advocate for a woman's right to choose, okay. um, especially with her being on the other side now yeah. and seeing the full perspective and the big picture of um, where life begins, where it does, doesn't begin in a soul's journey. Uh, she says the soul's contract and a soul's choice. Yeah. Um, she knows that this was her journey. And she knows that this was her purpose to bring forth understanding and awareness of the choices we have as humans, mm -hmm. but not just as humans, but we also have as souls. She does, um, there was actually multiple times um, that she would, that she, she would have chosen abortion. Okay. And not just once. Um, and she still believes in those rights for humanity to be able to choose. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, so it wasn't, it's not true that you were coerced into saying you wanted an abortion. No, it was not. Okay. True. No. Uh, Go ahead. That, that was, uh, she's saying that that was a theory created by political powers um she's telling me about just like her whole life her choices were never really her own choices she's eric's piping in here he's saying she was a lost puppy oh for, for a while um throughout her life she was always trying to find her footing and her grounding yeah. and making a lot of decisions and um as strong as she was as an individual she also was a sign of her times with uh, pressure from yeah. cultural pressure and political pressure. Um, and, and just want, she really did want to do the right thing. She, she, it was embarrassing for her to yeah. have the elements, she says, of her own uh, dictational beliefs 
Yeah. So um, it looks like she believes certain things that were not popular at the time that she was very strong in, but she wasn't strong enough as a soul in that time to be able to put forward her own belief system. And she didn't have the financial power to be able to push for the things that she believed in. She seems to me like she's kind of, honestly, she seems to me like she's kind of like a woman that would take a bra off and burn it, you know? Okay, I mean? so that, like, that's pretty much your, the, the beliefs that weren't popular was, did it have to do with feminism? Women's rights? Very much. It, it's not just feminism. Okay. It's, it is feminism, but it's, it's the power to choose how you want to live, whether that is well, being extreme. Female. Yeah. It, whether you're male or female, whether you're transgender or not, mm -hmm. whether you're gay or lesbian, whether you want to bring a child into this world or not, um, how you want to live. Like, let's say you really, you know, are just super uber Christian and that is how you want to live. Then she says like all the power to you. It's really about just saying like living your honoring your true self yeah. and living through essence and Eric is bringing up he's like yeah remember that essence like the Eric essence the Abby essence he Eric yeah. reminds me of like, like live your Abby essence <laughs> um so like she is very strong in that whatever your essence is she believes that you should be living uh do you believe in partial birth abortions where they're born and then killed I think don't be hating uh -huh. Okay, so she, she, okay, this is such a deep concept. Okay, so there's such a bigger perspective that we as humans can't wrap our minds around. Mm. Okay, so we're part of the whole, we're one of the whole. Um, we all learn from each other, grow from each other, and then we all have a mutual understanding coming into this earth, the roles that we're supposed to play with one another. Right. She's making it very clear and I just got spirit bumps so she's pretty happy I'm bringing this up like saying it exactly how she likes it mm -hmm. um it, it's your it is your choice because it is a contract bigger picture here you like that you and that unborn have made before that child enters your womb mm -hmm. so if you were to decide to and it was able to happen that you were to have like a later you're talking later term, term abortion yeah like some okay. right at during labor uh the ultimate points of labor the ninth month the ninth yeah. hour mm -hmm. um there's there's bigger things in play and in question that we our minds are too small to be able to understand the understandings of exactly what a soul contract is and how that comes into play with the ultimate sacrifices of your decision-making. Sometimes you will regret it. Sometimes you'll grow to hate yourself about it. Sometimes you'll yeah. feel that it's, you know, really the best thing for you and for that child. And it's extremely individual yeah. and God did give us free will. Yeah. However, um, it's really up to the individual and, you know, God, these are going to be some very unpopular <laughs> opinions, but she is letting you know that no matter who you are, God still loves you. Mm -hmm. God is real and God is love. Mm -hmm. And that ultimately it's about living your best self to your soul contract and living your life period yeah. how it pre-intended does that make sense i don't even know what yeah. i just said no 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 that's great because you're channeling <laughs> like it comes in here and it comes out here so like i don't even really know until so later when i watch it back and i go oh <laughs> oh god now i forgot what i was gonna say um I have, have, a really met, hard time. have you met the baby that you aborted Did, did she okay because i don't know anything did she abort a baby like are you sure i don't, I don't know. know maybe she didn't because i feel like she didn't okay okay um 
And I don't know why, but I'm not feeling that that okay. the baby in the question and the Roe versus Wade, I'm not sh- feeling that baby was aborted. Okay. I don't uh, know. You might want to look. But, uh, but I'm, I'm feeling curious. Um Because I, I'm feeling like this. this she gave birth this, and placed it up for adoption. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I had no um, idea. I thought she had an abortion. All right, well, yeah, I, I didn't do. I really didn't either, but I didn't feel like it. She, okay. I like, yeah, yeah, that. <laughs> okay. So, you know, of course, sometimes the mother and unborn child have the spiritual contract. And then sometimes souls could change uh, their, uh, their minds and uh, while they're in utero or, you know, and, and then die there through abortion or miscarriage. Is that true? Yes, that's true. Okay, but what about the the souls that are in utero but don't want to be aborted? It was not part of the plan. How do you feel about that? No matter what, it's a not a conscious contract. So we're not making these decisions in the in the moment. It's like a pre. It's kind of like how we have like lives before our lives and we don't remember them. And that's for a reason. It's also a very methodical, bigger concept plan than we can ever wrap our minds around nor judge because Mm -hmm. it's our minds are too small. We're little teeny peanuts. She says Mm -hmm. in, 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 in what we are, we're like little, she's showing me like little grains of sand. In, in, in existence of, of the bigger picture, the, the ultimate picture of what all of this is. So um, this was meant to bring up awareness ultimately. Yeah. But she's actually saying it's meant to bring up ultimate awareness of the gift that you have from God. And, and that is, the gift is for you to decide what that gift is. Well, what about the, um, child's deci- the baby's decision? It's kind of, it's kind of like what Eric has brought up to me before that I've had a really hard concept with. I've had a really hard concept with, cause I had a lot of deaths this past year. I've had to kind of like grieve through like a death is a death is a death. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's what he, when we, when we had a session about abortions and miscarriages, that's pretty much what he said. It's like babies. It's like in a revolving door, but but, you know, it's, it's, I don't think it, it's always a contract that both mother and child agrees on because the mother can have free will. And yes. maybe, that, maybe that baby was supposed to be born and do something. Oh, are you gone? Oh, am I going out? Sorry. Oh, there we go. Um, okay. So what do you say about that? I mean, who protects the, um, right of the baby who, you know, is killed because of the free will of the mother and it was not part of the spiritual contract, I guess I'm saying. But that's the thing that is the smaller picture of it Mm -hmm. is that it actually was part of the bigger picture. It was, there isn't, there isn't a, like the baby is going to know that this Mm -hmm. is going to happen. You're, you're thinking baby. We're talking. Oh, because there's no linear time. So the baby knows whether the mother's free will is going to, uh, uh, you know, super, see a spiritual contract okay and that makes sense just just as much as a baby knows and once again we're using the term baby we're going to say soul she says yeah a soul knows if there's going to be a miscarriage okay you know um there's it's such a bigger picture than just us small of course you know yeah all right so uh, um i'll go ahead please yeah go ahead uh, will there be any major acts of terrorism if Roe v. Wade is repealed? Oh, gosh. There's definitely, I mean, you, you can already feel the energy in the world from, I mean, it's just, But, but they're not, they're, they're not re- saying that it's illegal to have abortions. They just are punting it to the states. Right. And, and the thing is, is that if, I mean, maybe we don't know, that's just what the leaks. Right. Right. And, and 
depending on you know depending on the states she says it yeah. well it could go either way but as far as upheaval it's, it also depends on the state yeah it depends on it depends on the state it depends on the the group as a whole and it's just it's such a bigger thing than just Roe versus Wade because you have the so many things happening right now with like you know um bringing up like gay children or gay yeah. things in school or transgender and like yeah. the things happening in Florida and things you can say so it's like more than just the right to choose to have a early term late term abortion like this is a symbolism for people and that's why they're so passionate about it because it's a very oppressive feeling to take a step back in time right right you know and that's really what it's about um because she's showing me that in a, like she herself was extremely conflicted yeah. about her own um well it wasn't just about feminism it was like she didn't feel like she could be herself and mm-hmm. and have free love and so with Roe versus Wade, depending on the state, it's like almost bringing up, she's saying it's almost like bringing up the civil war again. Wow. You know, it's like, it's, it's a very divisional situation. Yeah. And so it can really divide things. She doesn't want to tell people, you know, like how, how their theory of when life begins, you know, does it, does the chicken come before the egg? That's not her role yeah in this conversation it's a very personal decision that you'll have with your own maker about how you feel about that for her it wasn't right and there were a lot of things that were not right for her that she got involved in that she didn't agree with and she went along with anyway because she thought Mm -hmm. she should and she isn't particularly proud of certain things that she should have been more firm about and it comes down to her own essence and who she was she was kind of small and vulnerable i think at that time maybe um she was poor she yeah, that, was brought up small. she yeah. was brought up um she was very un- she says very unconventional i'm sorry very unconventionally she says uh, okay um yeah, she, she, it doesn't seem like she had some, oh, it sounds like she had a lot of manipulation from like family members. It's, it's easier, unfortunately, to, to manipulate the poor, which is terrible. Like, she, it seems like she dealt with a lot of abuse. And, yeah. and so she didn't have, she had herself and she had herself guidance, but then, you know, without the money to be able to support her own individual belief system in the time that she lived in the time that this was all happening uh, and it just seems like she was so manipulated by so many different people like you got boyfriends yeah. you got like pressures like i mean husbands like i don't you know who the know father who... was yeah there was multiple fathers because there were multiple children but on this baby that uh, you ended up giving for up for adoption, yeah, was yeah, it sure. a boyfriend? Was it rape? Um, it was somebody that it was not rape. Okay, good. Um, it was consensual, but it was also a very confusing time for her, and she didn't want to have another child. Mm-hmm. Um, she was actually in love with somebody else. Oh, okay. Um, wow. Okay, so I, I'm leaning towards the whole, like she, she had a relationship with women okay. and she, was con- she, was con- she wasn't conflicted. She, she knew she definitely leaned more towards being attracted, you know, to women. Okay. Um, but she also, it's just like, she felt guilty about that you know what I mean like there's something wrong with her like so she was in love with a woman um um, at the same time not just one woman okay there were multiple women she found love with and it was a very um interesting and conflicting time for her because it was like she had these manipulations 
that were just so nasty and mean and not nice people. And they really, they abused her. Um, they used her, they used her and like- Who used her? Was it lawyers, family? The family, loved, lawyers, and, um, politicians. Oh, okay. Like ministers. <laughs> hmm. um, the, uh, she was very used by the world as a whole. She says like, hmm. it was this poor woman, honestly, because I mean, it's poor like thing. she could just live like how she wanted to live and just be how she wanted to be because it was like, she always had to just be this figurehead for something that she really, you know, um, she grew up a lot different than me, <laughs> you okay, know, before, but, 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 um, before it got into all the legal upheaval, what was your main decision for wanting an abortion? You couldn't have another mouth to feed or you didn't love the person that was a father or what? Okay. Uh, she just knew it wasn't right for her. She, well, she, yeah, she, she, she really didn't, she, it, it had to, had to do with the money. It had okay. to do with the money. It had to do with the time. It had to do with the support. It okay. had to do with the amount of stress she was under with taking care of her other children. Mm -hmm. It had to do with the lack of support. Mm -hmm. It had to do with the abusive relationships yeah. that she had around her. Um, so really, there was a number of factors well, that were- Well, you not, what you ultimately did, just say, okay, it's going to take nine months, but I'll just have the baby and give it to somebody who can't have a child. Not necessarily. Or um, instead of that, because you just couldn't handle the, the, the physical and emotional um, difficulties of, of maintaining a pregnancy, maybe? I don't, I don't want to put words in she, your mouth, she, did, she dealt with postpartum depression terribly. Yeah. Oh. Terribly, terribly, terribly. Yeah. She, she was very depressed because, because not only was she depressed about the fact that she what felt guilty about how she wanted to live in a relationship but um and it, it, there were just so many oppressing factors with how okay. she wanted to live but couldn't and then um okay so she, really she i just got lost sorry she's like talk, talking so fast <laughs> uh oh okay well so i guess i'm wondering no, 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 why no, no, no. did you decide to want an abortion rather than you know sticking it out for nine months and giving the child away like you ultimately did uh to a family that couldn't have children she never changed her thought process about wanting to have an abortion it was more the politi politics behind it okay so you even consider other options like giving up for adoption she didn't want to go through with a pregnancy okay because she uh, because of possible she was depressed she was, depressed. she was stressed yeah. out she was depressed she just didn't want to go through with it and she just didn't want, she didn't want to postpartum depression again probably right maybe right i mean it sounds like she never really got past yeah. the beginnings anyway okay. of her postpartum depression okay. but like she also had some hormonal imbalances yeah that i'm feeling um that really affected her psyche okay okay what about the oh, go ahead. Uh, um, she, she had some mental conditions too, that like made her at times yeah. bipolar ish. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't because she it, like, it wasn't abusive. You know, she wasn't trying to be abusive. She just like, she just had some mannerisms that were, right. were inconsistent. And so I don't know if she was ever diagnosed with bipolar, but like I'm seeing in her mind that um, she had a lot of those kinds of issues too. So um, she just dealt with a lot of mental and she's just gonna handle it. And then oh. on top of it, this whole Roe versus Wade thing, yeah. it's just forever. And I mean, it's like, you know what it's like, you put a court document in and then it's like, it takes oh, forever to just get in front of the judge. I can imagine. All right, how were so, you as a mother with your other children? She says she was deteriorated. So um, she wishes she could have been more and Impressive. she knows she wasn't. Yeah. Um, she says that she's forgiven herself yeah. for her, her misdoings. Yeah. Um, 
she doesn't feel that she was very attentive attentive um and then she trusted the wrong people because she didn't have the right people in her life I feel really heartfelt for her she's showing me like her family and people that she trusted like her mom and um just that lady seemed like she was kind of a psychopath so um god she never got told like hey you know lots of women out there they'll get pregnant people are so supportive of them getting pregnant and like you're gonna be a great mom Mm. you know we're gonna make a nice nursery and all that jazz like she didn't have that it was a it was like even though she was she was pretty young when I she had her first um and it it's it just support basically she never felt good about any of it and and then she was never really given the chance to be a good mom either because it was like everything was against her especially well, how, like how the kids grow up do they turn out okay mo- with other people mostly Okay, well, let me ask you this. Did you have a sealed adoption with this baby that's the, uh, in this controversy? Or have you, did you have any chance to, to have some sort of uh, life with him? Or did you just hand it over and never heard? So I'm getting it was a her. Huh? I'm getting it was a her. Okay. And I'm getting that um, it was a sealed adoption. Okay. What about the father? Did he not have a choice? He was disinterested. Okay. He he did. He did. Yeah. He was even less disinterested than she was. Okay. How much nefarious activity, like post, these are all from the community, so don't shoot the messenger. How much nefarious activity, like post birth abortions, where, where they are born and then they pit their spinal cord separate? organ harvesting and our, and stuff like that is actually happening what percentage of all abortion well we'll just start with there how much is there what percent of all abortions involve like post like nefarious activity this is making real right now um <clears throat> had it's, happen- it's happening a lot especially in inner cities hmm. It's happening a lot more than you can ever imagine. Um, there's a lot of unconventional, under the table activities that are happening that are not being state regulated, um, that are quite honestly sick. Um, yeah, we saw some undercover um, video of plan- a Planned Parenthood, I don't know how many selling uh, organs. Um, but, you know, on the other hand, do you just want to just burn it? I mean, should we just make it legal, but not maybe not sell, but give another baby a kidney or stem cells and things like that? I mean, I don't know that that that's so horrible, except the fact that it's somebody is profiting from the death of an embryo, a fetus. Eric's speaking up right now and he's saying really it's all about your own ethics about what you believe in there's no real one answer to that question and there's no real one answer to a lot of the questions you're asking because a lot of this has to do with your faith and your belief system yeah and what you believe in some people he says don't believe in stem cell research and yeah. and having stem cells you know put in you while other people swear by it yeah. Um, you know, it, it's just, it's a very personal, um, belief system that, you know, you'll, you'll sit down and you'll think about at least in your adult life, if you hadn't already thought about it during your teenage years about what you really think about it. Um, Eric is bringing up, you know, a lot of it is just fun in your religion, you know? yeah. <laughs> whatever that may be. Exactly. So religion. How, um, how often is uh, how what percentage of abortions um, involve organ harvesting from the aborted fetus? Just give me a number or how many digits in the number. It's actually very low. Okay. Um, I'm getting like I'm getting like thirty percent. That's um, and the uh, well, it's uh, I was thinking it would be higher, like eighty, but no. Oh. 
All right, it's what like, about post-birth abortions, like when they're born and then kill them? That happens, God. Yeah, they, also, they have a, an instrument that they, it's, a, it's for- At that them. point, isn't that murder? I mean, that's not, that's not even a Well, I mean, that's my view, but not everybody will agree with me. I mean, they feel pain at a certain point too. But it, again, spiritual contracts, so who knows? But how many are, uh, are aborted I can't imagine the very high are killed after their birth. Okay, so um, Eric's saying that in the seventies. Yeah, oh, this is like making me absolutely sick to my stomach. Mm. It was a it was a much more popular practice. Like it's actually making me physically sick to my stomach right now. Oh, think about something else then. I need to take a drink or something. I'm sorry. Okay. I get like imagery when I'm doing oh, reading. What's that now? Um, Hopefully. Okay. Um, okay. So now, once again, there's a lot of unconventional practices that are happening. And when it comes to different, oh, wow. When it comes to different sects of religion oh, okay. um, sectors. So I'm not just talking cults, I'm talking like different religion religious groups um that that is happening wow but not i don't want to i don't want to show what groups those are because i don't Mm -hmm. want to i mean you can't throw the baby out (laughs) there's there are are many religions that have good and bad uh so like and it's happened all it's happened all throughout history you know it's like um eric's bringing bringing up the roman empire he's bringing up you know the european history just like look at you know the history of the kings and queens in england or in france you know um when babies are born and it's and it's a female instead of a male or yeah you know they have they're extremely extremely deformed or like you know then then the the, he says the maid would milk me i don't know who he's seeing like the word milkmaid or something would just like take the baby and they would kill it yeah so um it's really disturbing that there's well, still- had too many babies uh number 14 i'm sorry you know yeah uh, it's- but don't you think well what do you think norma about killing a baby after it's born do you still think that's okay like okay so she doesn't agree with that okay however I mean, don't procrastinate, women. Oh. Once again, she's on the other side. I know. So she also sees the bigger perspective of what a death is. Okay. And so she understands things that we don't and couldn't, which is a death is a death. Okay. Well, so, okay. Morally, as human existence lies, you know, in the Ten Commandments, thou shall not kill, you know? So it's it's like, not okay it's not right to murder somebody you know because we as humans that's part of our that's part of our entire system of humanity not to murder somebody okay you know yeah so what do you tell what do you say about the pro-lifers who say your choice uh women are whether to have uh unprotected sex or not you could take plan b you don't have to have unprotected sex. That's they're saying that that is the choice for a woman. And once, once you're uh, pregnant, especially after a certain point, then hang on, then uh, it, it should be the right of the fetus, but to protect the fetus. Okay, so Norma is letting me know that she agrees with Plan B. Yeah, I think it's great. Um, she thinks that that's a real advancement with just medical science. Yeah. And it's a really great example about, you know, what comes first, the chicken or the egg yeah. um, on a chemical level in your yeah. body and what's happening to create, um, you know, a, a, a baby, you know? Um, and so she's supportive of, of, all of you know that yeah um and she wishes that that was an option for her and for many other women and she's thankful that society was able to adopt that into just like being able to get it and you know in this country cvs walgreens right you know so 
we under underestimate or okay i'm sorry let me repeat that okay um we devalue the ability of being able to have these options and she says it's out of pure stupidity that we if we don't ha want to have a baby and we have all of these options that we're not yeah. choosing right. to use these options well, also, it's more controversial given the fact that we are now in the age of ultrasound. So we know when the baby. Uh, Hold on. So like, my cat's like losing her mind here. I have a lot of her out of the room. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Hold on a second. I didn't even hear her. Oh my God. She's like slamming the door. She loves being in my room during like my readings. And then she gets to a point where she's like, okay, I've had enough of spirits. There's too many in here. Oh, I got it. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> All right. So, um, what was I talking about? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, my God. Um, was there a question you had written down? No, it just... So... So the women's choice... I mean, oh, yeah, at the age of ultrasound. Okay, now we know when a baby flinches in pain during embryonic surgery, for example. And, well, maybe it's pain. Who knows? So I admit when the heart's beating. So that makes it a little bit more difficult to to me to make the decision to have um to be pro-choice or, or, or when does life begin from this uh, from the perspective of source spirit i've asked source this question for many times i've asked this so this is kind of interesting um what happens is that a baby right when they're coming or when a soul is coming into a baby yeah it's it's very much like a we'll say like a person with alzheimer's they're in and they're out they're in and yes, they're out right they're in and they're out like it's a very confined that. space right. you know so that baby it's not like you have this soulless demon in your body it, it's not like that um but they're developing and they're growing and they're in and they're out so um kind of like somebody that has Alzheimer's yeah. they're there but they're not always there there was okay that's really great um okay so Norma's bringing up recently I don't even know when it was there was this woman that was like the the doctors and everybody was saying that she was brain dead and um her parents were insisting no 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 like she's smiling look she's reacting to us and her husband, she had gotten like in a car accident, right? And her husband was like, no, she's, we need to just let her go. We need to just like stop the feeding tube. Yeah. It was this huge controversy. Yeah. And the parents were like, look, she's reacting to us. You know, um, look, she, she's smiling. Look, like she's flinching. You know, we can't just take the feeding tube out. And her husband, again, insisting like, let's do this, but they didn't. And yeah. then eventually um, they did end up she ended up passing, they let the feeding tube go and they did uh, autopsy and they found out that the entire time, all of that flinching, all of that, she really, really, really was brain dead. Like there, all of yeah. these things that people thought that they reflex. were on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was a reflex. So even though the vessel was existing and having reflexes, the soul was no longer in the, in the vessel. Okay, but but again, when does spirit think life begins? At what point? Okay, so life begins way more than we think it does, like way before actually. Um, Norma's letting me know that it, it really begins with the sole contract point of it when they're wow. making the agreements to decide about how this is going to go and how it's going to play out and what roles they're going to play with each other yeah so okay. that's actually really when life begins that's interesting i know i never would have all right from that. the bio biology standpoint what biology. Is, when does spirit think life starts <clears throat> okay i always thought it was when the heart started beating that's what I always I thought. Know. I know. Well, no, I know. Yeah, I know it's. I always thought it was that. It's not like two cells. Eric is showing me. 
Eric's showing me that actually it has to do with the brain development and the brain stem development. Oh, okay. Okay, so it's when the brain stem starts actually coming down the spine. Oh, okay. I don't know what week that is. Um, and the heart's beating and some there's, okay, this is really, I wish you could see what I'm seeing. Um, there's some kind of interaction there with the brain stem coming down and, and it like, it doesn't attach to the heart, but it like hits the heart. And it's like at that moment, Oh, wow. We both know you're a doctor. I'm the medical field. The brain stem does not touch the heart, but it's almost like as it those actually mind. lines yeah. transverse and they hit, you know, that is really when it begins. Um, but then also there's a lot to it because I mean, I, I remember when I was, um, like nine, I was eight months pregnant with David yeah. and my best friend, Nicole was nine months pregnant. And I forget what the term is called, but the baby disconnected from the uterus oh, wow. from the wall and she ended oh, up having a, I mean the placenta. Yeah. The placenta. Yeah. Okay. And, yeah. Um, yeah. And so the baby died in utero and she had to give birth to stillbirth and it was horrible. Oh, so sad. Oh, um, you know, it, like yeah. things like that can happen. And that's part of the baby's soul contract. It doesn't mean the baby didn't have a soul and they come in and out like throughout the whole pregnancy, they come in and out. And then yeah, once the baby's born, that's a spiritual, they're life. coming. In. I, I just want to clarify biological life. Okay. So yeah. um, Norma, how did things change now that we're in the age of, of an ultrasound, the ultrasound? And also, can I, can I just back up a little bit? Sure, sure. I'm sorry. Sorry. Can I back up a little bit too? Uh, Cause like I'm, I get lots of imagery cause I'm seeing like, remember how I just described how like the spinal comes down this um, and like kind of makes that transverse with the heart. Mm -hmm. um, like even before that, it can still be a soul. Yeah, of course. Uh, so like, the spiritual life, I'm telling you, I want to sort of divide that from the biological life, really. I mean, viability okay. biological viability versus soul viability so yeah i understand that so uh has the age of ultrasound and also the age of uh postnatal care where babies uh are uh, can be saved even a very you know when they're 22 weeks 24 weeks how does that change the morality the ethics of the um of the abortion controversy. I'm asking Norma about this one. She's stepping forward. She's saying that it, it can change things hugely because that baby can be adopted. Yeah. Okay. You know, whereas years ago, they may not have been able to save a baby that was that early on. Um, she does believe in adoption, but for some people, it's just not right because well, for like you, you could not is, understand it physically or emotionally, I guess. So but yeah, you did. So <laughs> awesome. Did you get pro, uh, um, um, depressed after the birth of that baby? She, got, she uh, yeah, she did deal with again, postpartum. Um, and she actually also felt guilty that she wanted to have an abortion, you know, um, but she kind of goes back and forth with it. Cause I think like in her heart, she really always believed in like the ability to be able to choose to have an abortion. Right. But then there was this, like time where she had a lot of pressure to like go against yeah. what she, we're going to get into that. Oh. We're definitely going to get oh. into that later on. Uh, but I, I heard a story on the radio when I was driving somewhere amid all this controversy about um, a woman who was pregnant and the doctor said, your baby is going to be horribly deformed. You have to have an abortion. And she said, oh. mm. so she got a second opinion and said, no, the baby's fine. So she ended up having the baby and uh, who grew up to be a perfectly 18 year old um, athlete right now. And she is, sits behind the doctor at, the, at his games because one of his kids is in the sport, same team too. I said, see this, this guy, you wanted me to kill it. So there are so many stories on both sides. Okay, both sides. 
All right. It is my understanding some galactic species create hybrids using humans. If two of 20 are perfect, the other 18 are destroyed. So would you consider this abortion? And is it, is it, uh, it, and is it humans that have moral and ethic beliefs contrary to alien beings? So, so aliens, galactic species create these hybrids and, you know, all right, you know, two of you guys pass muster, the other 18, we're going to kill it. We'll just kill it. So in the future, that will be happening. And in the past, that has happened. She's yeah, bringing yeah, up yeah. World War II um, with Hitler mm. and his, you know, ultimate supreme blue eye, blonde hair yeah. beings. <laughs> and in the future, um, far future, not right now, um, it will also be, uh, it, it will come up. But not what I understand, so. alien not in any of our times. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, from what I understand, galactic alien species have already created hybrids. We are alien hybrids. We have been created from a mix yeah. of I don't know Anunnaki yeah. and human and all correct. that kind of stuff. So that is when, correct. Like uh, Sophia, the the uh, Anunnaki geneticist, uh, was a part of this experimentation. And I guess maybe they did. It's like, okay, boom, you're done. You're, you're not perfect. And yeah, you guys can go ahead. And Eric's go bringing on. up that like all the way back to ancient Egypt. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, probably that, before that, other um, planets. Yeah, like he's he's just showing me like the history of the timeline that, that that's always been. And that's why a big part of us, well, that's why some of us choose to take our exit points, mm -hmm. you know? Cause it's like, it's like, we know that we're not meant to, like we, we know we're not, we're not fitting in here and we don't know why and we don't have an answer for it or a name for it. Sometimes we just like, I mean, I guess who's to say who's weird. I'm definitely weird, but, um, <laughs> you, know, you know, I know you're weird. <laughs> you know, I am. But, All right, well, we'll go but, but, but do humans have the different morals and ethics beliefs compared to aliens in regards to this abortion thing? They don't have the same perspective of it as yeah. we do. Their value system, they seem much more the scientific end of it, I guess, versus more the religious end of it because okay. they like they don't have the Christianity part of it. They yeah. don't have the Ten Commandments. They don't have yeah. that part of it isn't part of them. So, I mean. Or maybe they're more evolved to see the spiritual um component is the soul is agreed that uh if it doesn't work out then ex exit stage left etc yeah you know it's very difficult to say norma's showing me something interesting okay so like i have no idea where this is but she's showing me like volcanoes and like how they used to use sacrifices and like use small children and throw them in volcanoes Ugh. yeah horrible and so it, it's it's like different societies of people not just aliens they just have different belief systems okay. about where life begins and what's okay yeah. and for hyper you know what's okay um you know during our american um history norma's bringing up the american indians yeah. and how we completely annihilated tribes of people and how we took you know races of children that were half Indian and you know I'm not going to say an Indian Native American yeah. and half white and like we tried to fit them into like the white schools and like try try to make them English you know um it, it's just it's not just with alien races that will happen in the future it's Absolutely. happening throughout history of humanity yeah I hope that answered your question yeah it does uh, okay, so knowing that um, part of the population is pro-life, part is pro-choice, do you believe taxpayers should have to pay for a woman's abortion? She actually believes in universal health care. She believes that as a society, we should be helping each other with of course, but I'm, I'm uh, saying health. That if a woman has unprotected sex, 
uh -huh. and does not want to give it up for adoption, should the, a pro-life taxpayer contribute to paying for her abortion? Oh, this is going to be such an unpopular opinion, and I'm sorry, but Norma believes yes. Oh, well, I disagree with you, Norma. I mean, I disagree with Norma. To pay for their choices because there are some people who are, have religious beliefs. I'm not one of those, like Catholic, like it's a sin to have an abortion. I'm not one of those. But it's, it's hard I, to I, ask don't, somebody, I don't agree with Norma. It's, it's hard to ask somebody uh, when it goes against their religious tenets. And again, that's not me to ask them to pay to kill a fetus. So I'm just putting it out there. Okay, but I I'm, totally I'm agree with you, really, but I am the channeler. That's okay. my job. <laughs> yeah, I know. Don't you the mess. Uh, all right. Uh, do you know Norma who leaked the um the the thing, the Roe v. Wade thing from Alito? I'm sorry, I didn't hear the beginning of what you said. Who leaked the document? Um here recently the supreme court document was it a clerk Did who, uh, who who leaked oh, the, um, the re the the decision the draft decision of the supreme court on roe v wade eric's jumping in on this one okay okay so this goes to higher powers of the government okay. that are trying to create division for political, for political game. Mm. It has to do with, it has to do with politics. Somebody up above leaked this. So that way, you know, um, Biden, you know, he's got what, two years in office left. Well, how does he so they're to this though? I mean, how does he come to these drafts? I can't imagine. It seems like it's only the justices and their clerks, but I don't know. I don't know very much. Um, I, I mean, I, Okay, I'm asking Eric right now. <laughs> okay, so there's archives. He's showing me archives right now of information. And he's showing me drafts. And he's showing me, um, like, uh, what are they? Transcription subscribers, right? Okay. And then he's showing me, like, people that just have their nose in everything that you would have no idea that they have their nose in everything. Cause let's wow. face it, the government doesn't tell us everything for a reason yeah. that they knew that this was happening and they knew if they leaked it, then it could influence things politically for um, the upcoming election. And it could cause, a, it could cause division. It could cause, um, it could cause a lot of issues. You know, it, it was purposely leaked because it was supposed it was supposed to cause problems. It was supposed was to cause like somebody higher up, for example, is one example. Um, outside of the Supreme Court, told one of the um, subscribers that typed it up, "Hey, I'll okay, give you money if something like so that." So there's actually, <laughs> I don't want to believe this because I'm such a patriot, but I would think that our judicial system and our justices um, would have like their own, you know, in an in yeah. amenity and, and separate from the president and what's right is right. And they'll make their choices, but actually, and all there's like corruption still, Ugh. um, with those things. And it makes me yeah. very sad yeah. to, to hear Eric say this to me. And I don't like it because that's not how I was brought up to believe. Mm. Um, but there's higher political powers and, um, I'm not being, I'm not being given names. <laughs> okay. Um, protection. Yeah. But I'm giving, I'm being given very upper political powers that are trying to influence um, controversy. Is, are it, trying uh, to, is it power as part of the Supreme Court arena or outside of it? It's, Huh. Okay, so it's outside and it's inside. So it's outside, but then the outside is inside. It's that corruption. Oh, so the outside is getting the somebody in the inside to like I can't even believe it over. right now because like I really just believed in my heart that it was so separate and there wasn't yeah. any kind of corruption there, but like there is, and that makes me very sad. Oh, was it somebody on the left or somebody on the right, a conservative or a liberal? Okay, so I am getting that it was um, more liberal. Yeah, well, it's, uh, 
it seems yeah. like it would be more to their advantage than yeah, I, I'm getting but, that it was more liberal um that it was that it was brought out okay I yeah. will. And, and it's like all in Eric showing how it's like all in synchronicity with a lot of the headlines that are going on in the news right now if you just like watch the news and right. watch he says like the things that they're talking about and the trials that they're having yeah it's kind of all in perfect synchronicity these things that are coming up because it's like it's just all wicked political and they're just mm -hmm. playing so dirty and it's very sad because this is not what our forefathers were intended nation to be about okay. teddy roosevelt would be very unhappy right now oh my god <laughs> I don't even know if he's Republican or whatever. Were you influenced or Norma, were you influenced or pushed by the left? We're almost finished to lie about what happened to you in order to get Roe v. Wade passed. I don't know. Did you even lie about anything? She did what lie at first. again. Were she you did lie at first. Or pushed by the left to lie about what happened to you in order to get Roe v. Wade passed. Okay, so the lines were not so drawn for the left and the right at that time for her. Oh. And I mean, they were and they weren't, but it was more like um, it had to do with money, like so much about money and people wow. coming into political power yeah. and new names coming into government yeah. and what could that could mean for them um, and their political stance in history and who they could become in this country so uh she was really used um and she okay. did lie at first okay. and um you know she said some things that were absolutely inaccurate but what and, what, what was the main lie I don't, I don't even know okay um well she she did say that um okay so it was like the rape thing like she said she was raped oh okay yeah, she said she was raped. So is the rape thing. Um, and then like she couldn't keep her story straight. Yeah. So then it was almost like she was forced to come out. And then there was like a lot of shame oh. behind her lying because like she had been a liar her whole life, according to her mother, you know, and um, she just never really had such a great reputation. Um God, you know, I can't wait to like do some research on this. <laughs> yeah, well, we love you, Norma. We know what you did it was part of your contract. All right. How do you feel about being, I don't even know this is true. How do you feel about being paid by the anti-abortion rights movement to switch sides? Did, did that really happen? And if so, did you regret it? That really happened. No. Oh. And why did you make you really did regret it? it? Did they pay you to switch sides or did you actually feel it was proper to switch sides? They paid her to switch sides. Oh God. And her heart of all her, sides, I swear. There's like so much more to it too, though. There's like yeah. once again a lot of very high, there's just a lot of people that just were trying to like make names for themselves politically yeah. and also religiously. And because this was such a high profile case, if these lawyers could get involved and their name could get involved, like, you know, only reason why anybody knows the name Kard Kardashian is because yeah. of O.J. Simpson's trial, you know? So it's like, people were trying to get into, like, look at the Johnny Depp case. Who right. would have known who that, I don't know that her, the, his lawyer, I but don't either. it seems like she got a lot of press, you know what I mean? Yeah. It, it, it's just like, um, I saw somebody even like get a tattoo with Johnny Depp's lawyer's name or picture. Isn't that weird? I know. Um, so it, it had, it was never it really a... about Norma yeah. and her born child. It was about big politicians, people that had money that act like they cared that were trying to promote her. And then like, you know, um, once she had the baby and then the baby was adopted, yeah. she was given a sum of money to like revert her whole it, like spiritual basis. Like it, it, she was paid off to, to so change. So you were paid her. to be pro-life. Yes. At least 
did you become pro-life though or not? There was moments she questioned oh, yeah. whether she really was um, pro-life or whether or not she just, she, was, she wasn't proud of it. She still, she was ashamed about, like these were embarrassing things. These were very personal things and yeah, they were very public. And you know, so being it was like, bottom. she wanted to be the good girl. Like she, or yeah, yeah. she wanted to do it right. She wanted to convert herself. Like she's showing me like a lot about Christianity, mm-hmm. you know, like she's showing me like, and there were moments where she was like, okay, you know, maybe I am for life, you know? Um, but then like your essence and who yeah. you really were and what she really thought, like she couldn't escape from those things. Yeah. So, so it, she, she had time. level. She was pro choice, right? Right. But then after the baby was born and then maybe to justify the money that they were giving you, you changed your stance to um, pro life. Um, I think it, it wasn't even about the money that was given to her. It was about okay. the, um, it was about the attention. It was about a, not intention in like, in like the celebrity. It was, it was just like it, she felt like people cared about her and were looking out for her. She was manipulated her entire life by everybody. She said that's 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 important for you to have a voice right now. It really is. Yeah. 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 So it, it just seems like she just, her entire life was manipulated by everybody in every way. And it wasn't until the end of her life that she finally really developed a real need for her cause and was able to come to terms with, with her voice Good. and what she really believed. So, you know, when she passed, she, she came to her own. She really knew who she was. She really believed in what she believed and she made it very clear. So, mm-hmm. you know, it was part of her journey. It was part of her process. Um, and some things just got taken way too far. Yeah. Some things still get taken way too far. Um, some people Both really sides do. are corrupt. I, I, you know, I'm yeah, not naive. Yeah. Just, they're all nasty. Yeah. Or most. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, like I said, I personally don't agree with a lot of what Norma feels, but I'm just, I, believe, the I, I agree with some and disagree with others. Yeah. She's, yeah, it educated so. me a lot. So, Norma, how is your your child doing? Your daughter, now growing up, obviously, she's proud of her. Oh, good. I think she's beautiful. Good. Um, Does the public know her name? Probably not. The public does know her name, but she's not giving it. No, like no, she's, don't. No, it's, yeah, she's she's not giving it to me. She no, might give I, it. I don't. I don't want her, to know. It. It's not. She's ever. not giving me names. <laughs> but she that says question. the public does know the the name okay uh last question what is the collective lesson we are learning from this topic norma and, and if you want to add anything else this is your chance to have a voice <laughs> um okay um once again this was a political play she says how they used the I'm going out on a limb here. I believe she's saying the 14th Amendment, okay, um, the Constitution, to mm-hmm. protect her rights. And I know that that has to do with privacy rights. So she, when Roe versus Wade first came out, Jane Roe, Jane Roe, right? That was it. Um, that it wasn't until she came out and said it was me. So she was actually yeah. like, so once again, it just goes to show that it was like, I'm seeing some big guys here. Some of them, th- did this happen in Texas? I think so. Probably. Okay. I'm seeing some big guy with a cowboy hat. That's why. Oh I'm yeah, saying. probably. <laughs> Maybe that's <laughs> big way. guy with a cowboy hat. Um, I'm just seeing some, some big players here that were trying to make a name for themselves politically and using her situation to gain, um, ro- uh, what's the word? rotation involvement substance name for themselves and right. who they were and so that way they could grow politically and That's monetarily it was all hat no cattle probably as we say in texas um <laughs> so um 
All right, anything else you want to add before we close? She's thanking you for having her here. She's saying, um, you're you. very kind, Melissa. Thank you. Eric's saying, I love you, Mama. I love um, you. Too. <laughs> Eric's saying, everybody remember to be kind. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is a hard comments. I mean, do this your work. You know, we don't read comments yeah. anyway, but this is like, this is a hard topic because it's just it's so difficult, guys. Freaking I mean, personal. Right. And, and I, you know, it makes it more complicated because there's a biological level and there's a spiritual level. And, you know, I can understand both sides. Um, yeah. I can right. too. And I think a lot of us can. And I'm really glad I didn't know what I was doing before. We yeah, it's going on. Yeah, it's like, yeah, you can do this, this, or that. I'm glad All it right. got sprung on me. <laughs> we're going to, um, out. We're going to probably get into Jan uh, January 6th, uh, too. I just wrote that down to see if Paola can collect questions. So you guys hit the notification bell so you don't miss whatever's coming up. We're going to talk about the Uvalde shooting uh, sh uh, shooter, and we're going to interview him and the children. So you don't want to miss that either. So be sure you subscribe and share. Also, we're going to let Abby tell you how she can be reached. Sure. Um, you can find me at brightsidemedium.com. Just go on my website, just fill out information about yourself on the link, um, or you can email me at abby to A-B-B-I-E-D at hotmail.com. Abby. All right. Thank you. Abid. Love you all. all. Right. Bye, bye, bye Lisa. Eric says, love you, Mama. He's telling you how proud he is of you right now for having oh. this conversation. Oh, thank you. I know it's difficult. I'm proud of you. You did a great job, Abby. Wonderful. Me? Good, because yes. I'm kind of terrified right now. No, don't. <laughs> Have a good evening. Bye, everyone. Bye.